please. Greetings from the Working Class Movement Library and welcome again to our Invisible Histories Talks. We're delighted today to welcome Liz Payne, Chair of the Communist Party. She's going to be talking to us about a new book called Red Lives, which is out on the 1st of August this Saturday to commemorate, celebrate the centenary of the Communist Party. So over to you, Liz. Well, thank you very much, uh, Lynette, and thank you very much to the library for asking me to speak. It really is a great uh, privilege. And um, what I want to do in the 40 minutes um, or so uh, that, that we have, half, half an hour to 40 minutes, is to um, set the book in the context of the party's centenary. It is one of the centenary projects we have had to um, such a work. Then I want to talk about a little bit about what the concept of it is, about the people who've written for it, because that's in some places almost as interesting as the people they've written about. So I want to do a little bit about the writers and contributors. Um, and then, of course, I'll say a little bit of, about some of our comrades who feature in the book. Um, clearly there are a lot of them, so we won't be able to talk about everybody in this, me in this meeting, but we'll pick out one or two interesting ones, and I think some of you um, may well know them, have known them, have heard about them. Um, and then we'll have a little bit of a summary about how we think the book is going to be used and also how you can get hold of it. So if that sounds like a good plan, um, this is where everybody needs to nod. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's what we'll do. So first of all, then, if I could just say that this coming weekend, the 31st of um, July and the 1st of August, this is the centenary of the Communist Party. The Communist Party was founded at the Unity Conference in London um, on those, over those two days in 1920. And something that I really did want to stress there is actually the word unity, and I've done this in my little address to the party uh, about it. It's called a unity, it was called a unity conference, and it did something very special. It brought together the most progressive, the most determined um, organisations and individuals together to um, take the struggle for socialism in Britain, for a better Britain, for a better world, to bring them all together. And there had been a lot of um, talks, as you can imagine, going on between all the different groups before we got to that foundation um, uh, conference. Open talks, talks about what everyone agreed with and what they didn't agree with, um, what they could do, what would go in the constitution, what would go in the party strategy. And I think that this is such a feature of the party then and the party now. We want to reach out, that we want to include um, um, across the left and we want to talk across the left. Keep keep that struggle, not just about joining a party and uh, doing things, but about doing things with the whole working class in Britain. So that's about our um, centenary. And we're marking it um, with an online event, which was going to have been a very big event in London this weekend on Saturday. But um, it is online. This is a commercial, everyone. Um, if you would like to sign up for any of the sessions um, on Saturday, they are hour and a half sessions, almost all of them, I think. Um, some of them all run against each other, so you have to uh, choose what you'd most like to go into. But if you go onto the Communist Party's website, forward slash centenary, you can register important thing if you do want to do that the registrations close tomorrow evening thursday so go and have a look um, and i think somebody might nicely put the uh, party website um, up for me communist party um, and and uh, forward slash centenary thank you 
thank you. So thank you about that. That will be fantastic. Um, now we had a lot of things planned for our centenary and we did want to emphasize that it isn't only about rejoicing in our history, commemorating our history, commemorating the work of our comrades, celebrating the work of our comrades. It is also about thinking about where we are now, how what we have built can take us forward and what we're going to be doing indeed in the next century. Because on Sunday morning, we will wake up to take our first steps into our second century along Britain's Road to Socialism, which is the name of our party's programme, as um, many of you will probably know. So we are marking it with a new um, party history, which Mary Davis, I think many of you will know Mary. Mary is the editor of the new party history. Um, and there have been a lot of um, contributors to uh, that um, volume. It's thematic and really, really good uh, volume. It's going to come out later in the year, um, in the autumn. We have a film, a party history film, which is almost complete and ready to go. We have an exhibition which was ready to go the weekend before lockdown. We had it in triplicate and it was going to travel all around the country. Well, it still can. It's going to travel all around the country as soon as we're able to uh, let it um, safely do so. But we have, we have, as I say, it's in triplicate um, and, and uh, I'm sure the um, library will be able to get it at some time, Lynette's nodding. So that's, uh, that was the exhibition. We also then decided that it would be very, very good if we could put together, and this is where Red Lives comes in. We won't have a hundred lives at the moment. There are quite a few more than a hundred lives in the publication now. We wanted to do a publication that wasn't exactly an academic one, if you know what I mean. But it would be an easy and accessible read where we could, we could have short pieces on perhaps comrades that might not have had all the attention in the past or whose, whose contributions, perhaps because they passed away some time ago, might start to be forgotten, but who were nonetheless um, very, very important. Um, it partly came about, we've had thought for about a year now um, on the Red Lives Project, it partly came about when um, an exhibition on the artist Doris Hatt came to Taunton, which is my hometown, and I really didn't know very much about Doris, I'd heard her name, and I went along to that exhibition and it was absolutely fabulous. I think Eleanor might remember going to Doris's house if I haven't misremembered the story um, because uh, Dor Doris uh, lived near Bristol and that's where Eleanor uh, uh, grew up. Um, but I thought, you know, I wonder how many comrades really know anything about, about Doris and her wonderful art. This vibrancy of colour, these picture of women mending nets and the men, men and men working on the quayside and pictures of communities with um with with beautiful colors you can tell i'm not an art critic everybody i'm not pretending to be but um these beautiful colors floating in patches across um, doris's uh, work and then there was one particular picture that caught my eye and it said still life you know everyone, everything in the picture was moving. And isn't that what we know? We know that everything is always moving. So anyway, what, that, was one, that was one of the strands that brought us into thinking that it would be amazing to um, have a book with short pieces, about 700 words, we thought. Um, Oh, somebody's saying, can we confirm the name of the artist, please? It was Doris Hatt, 
H A P T, if anyone's interested, or a tap. The exhibition was called A Life in Colour, and the book about her that went with the exhibition was called Revolutionary Artists at Work. So there we are. So, so that that gave us a, an idea. And when we were thinking how to mark the how to mark the centenary, we said, we know that's what we're going to do. But how are we going to get people to uh, write? We said it. We didn't uh, want it to be academic. We didn't want it to be very big um, contributions. There were already some quite hefty biographies about um, some of our comrades out, and quite an awful lot known about many of um, our leaders. Um, and I must say, um, well, from start to finish, um, that we must acknowledge the um, biographies that um, Graham Stevenson, who um, sadly uh, passed away um, only very recently, um, hundreds and hundreds of biographies of um, communists, Graham worked put online and they're still there online and I think the family are going to continue that site and keep it there. But when we talked about this project uh, with Graham, because we didn't want to think him to think we were doing something that rivaled his uh, biographies, as it were. But no, he said it would be he would be very, very happy for everyone who was going to write to access those uh, those biographies if if they would like, as long as we obviously acknowledged uh, that that was the case in the book. And so that's what we've done. Um, but uh, because um, Graham um, has in fact. Uh, passed away very recently. There is also a biography of Graham in the book, so you can find you can find Graham Stevenson there too. So, so we had quite a lot of uh, biographical um, material to go on, but there were um, comrades, living comrades, who could write about their mum, their dad their other family members, their branch, struggles that they were involved in or comrades that they knew. And we said, you know, you don't have to be a historian. We really want to be able to access your memories of, of uh, the comrades concerned. How did you know them? What impact did they have on your life? And I think I saw when I was looking at the full gallery view, I think I saw um, um, Cad, Carolyn Jones, um, there in the audience. And she wrote about her dad, Bill Jones, and it's a wonderful, wonderful piece. And I was saying before the meeting started, Eleanor wrote about her mum and, 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 uh, and, and, and others, Ivy, Ivy Wood. We'll come to, we'll come to the name. Um, so we thought this would be fantastic. We would get people to write about, as I say, 700 words. You'll see that some of them are very much longer than that. Um, some people started to write about either their mum or their dad and said, I can't write about one without the other, which is a rather lovely thing. And those um, biographies are a little bit longer, but it's the sort of book that you, they're all in alphabetical order, it's the sort of book that you can pick up and you can um, just literally read one or read um, two and put back again. You can use it as a reference book. I know comrades won't like me saying it's a coffee table book, but I think I did say that to Lynette when we were talking about it. You can put it somewhere that's easily acceptable and anyone who comes anywhere near you will find something that interests them in it. We wanted our, going back to the centenary, we wanted our centenary to be about the people. The people are the movement and the movement um, is the people. And that's what we were thinking. I wonder if Lynette would put up the second slide now because they are some posters and postcards that we are promoting for our centenary. And I don't want to talk about them in detail, I only wanted to flash them up as it were, but uh, there you will see that we look at the crowds of people in the top left hand corner speaking to the movement, people behind 
um, faces and the faces who have addressed the movement. Um, so very, very Im important there um, that we think that what we're doing in this project is bringing the great campaigns at home and abroad alive in this book. Um, we also wanted to do something else with this book. Could we move to the next um, slide that is just, I believe, a list of contributors? Oh no, that's the cover of the book. That's the cover of the book. And it says a hundred communists and the struggle for socialism. You will actually find that there are something like 132 of them, actually, in the book. Um, we conceived of it as having a hundred. And then we thought, no, who will we decide to put in? Who will we decide to leave out? And we thought we'll get everybody writing. We'll see what comes in. And I've been very, very vociferous in saying that we need to write volume one on the front cover. It's not printed yet, um, um, but uh, we, need, we, we need to put volume one on the front cover because we have already decided that uh, there will be a volume two. And we already have a small handful of biographies in for the second volume. So that is, uh, that is important. Red lines. Um, I wanted to say something about the two logos um, as well that appear on the front cover. You'll see the traditional logo in the top um, left hand corner and we use that for um, when we are doing, dealing with historic references um, the histori and historic use of the logo and remembering the past. The logo that is at the bottom um, of, the, uh, of the cover in the bottom right hand corner, that is our party's current logo. And it is a hammer and sickle. It is a hammer and sickle. The sickle is a dove. The sickle is a dove. And it is, of course, the dove of peace. And we believe this is very important because throughout our history and going forward and in the struggles that the people we have written about in this, um, in, in this uh, red lines, the, the, um, they have been fundamentally involved in the struggle against the ruling class in Britain and the ruling class in Britain are an imperialist class and we believe that the struggle against imperialism and war and for peace is absolutely central. It is our raison d'etre as a party. So you see both the logos there, um, two logos, same history, same emphasis. Okay, could we have the next slide Lynette please? There we are. You don't need to be able to read all the names, but we're, um, we're thanking everyone who has made the contribution. And you see just how many they are. So many, so many names. Um, some of the names uh, you will know very, very well. We haven't put a name against each of our entries. We decided not to do that. We decided that it is a collective work. Um, we have encouraged new writers who may not have written anything either for a very long time, who don't normally write, um, that it is the work of the party and it is the responsibility of all of us. So a, collect so a collective effort and you can't see who wrote each um, little piece, but it is very, very obvious. Um, some of them um, yes, uh, who did write it but we do thank everybody it's not a project that's taken a lot of years as I've said we really started the writing of it only in um, late November and December so it's been quite um, quite a, a, a quick something in order for an entry let's move to the people who are featured in it now because that's probably what we've all been waiting for but I wanted to set them 
into the context of our party and it's going forward. But um, the FD written about, um, you needed to be no longer with us. We decided that we were not going to write about living comrades. Um, and you needed to have been in the party. This is very, very important. The party has had um, a long history of struggle and some comrades have joined it and left. Others have come in, have been in all sorts of other parties and have come in to the party later in their life. So although you had to, as it were, have already died um, to have an entry into it, we didn't say you have to have been a com communist or a life in the communist party. You didn't have to do that at all. So you will find, for example, I wrote one piece about someone that I knew very little about until this project, and that was um, Rutland Boughton. And Rutland Boughton was the um, founder of the first Glastonbury Festival in, um, in 1914. And I mean, abs absolutely fascinating life. What a contribution. Now, Rutland left the party in um, 1956 as did a number of, uh, of our comrades um, around that time. They had um, certain disagreements with the party and its, uh, and its line. And he died four years later, he died in 1960. No way would we have thought not to include him. So this, there is no sectarianism in our choice of who to include. And we have also mentioned the fantastic uh, work on peace that Rutland did um, after leaving the party. So I, I wanted to make that very, very clear. You do need to have been um, a comrade at some point to have made it into the uh, biography. But you don't need to have had 60 years in the party, though some um, have. And we also did particularly want to concentrate on um, on those, as I've said before, who were not particularly famous. So you may look through this biography and think, where's Harry Pollitt? Well, Harry Pollitt, um, our longtime uh, general secretary, Harry Pollitt isn't there. Um, so um, it, it, it's, it's about people um, who, as I say, have something to tell us in our struggles these days, but that people may not. Um, already know about. So some of the characters, I'm just going, just trying to look at the time because my uh, my clock's disappeared off my screen and I don't, oh yes. Um, um, some of the characters in the, uh, in, in the book. Um, we have trade unionists, we have peace activists, we have environmentalists, we have men and women, we have, um, we have black people, we have people from all parts of the country, we've got people who contributed in every possible uh, way in it. I've picked out one or two to mention and obviously I didn't intend to go in any detail into them but because they'll be probably familiar to you already but we have a, have a list of um, of comrades um, from the Northwest. Um, so Clem Beckett is in it. Some of you may know of Clem Beckett, um, speedway rider, a motorcyclist rider, very, very, very famous at international level even. Um, he, uh, 1906, 37. Um, he left school and initially became a blacksmith. Um, he did get blacklisted for forming a union, um, the Dirt Track Riders Association, um, he, he, he formed later. Um, he was a, a very, very strong anti-fascist um, um, worker. He visited the um, Soviet Union. Um, he did set up a motorbike repair shop in Oldham Road in Manchester, and he died in Spain. Um, at 31 years old. 
Um, in alphabetical order, I've got next Ruth and Eddie Brown, um, who I know you all know about because I think they were absolutely instrumental in forming the, um, the working class movement library. And if I'm not wrong, and Eleanor will correct me, I think that uh, the began as a most amazing collection in their house. Um, so, uh, so uh, that very very famous um, for that. Um, Eddie, um, son of a Lancashire tenant farmer, as I'm sure you, you'll know, he became an engineer. He lost his first job um, because he came out um, in favour of the general strike. He says that he lost 20 out of his 21 jobs that he, that, uh, he ever had. Um, the National Unemployed Workers Movement was something that he was involved with. I think he was chair of the Salford branch. Um, and um, Ruth, um, who joined the Communist Party in 1945, um, she, uh, she was um, a member of the British uh, Peace Committee, now called the um, British Peace Assembly. And she was a National Committee member of that. She did fantastic work for peace. She was a teacher. She did fantastic work for teachers and for education. Um, and um, made, as you say, a huge, huge um, contribution. So I think that as individuals and together as a team, that was, a, that, I mean, really, what an astounding, um, an, an astounding, um, um, heritage they've given the working class. That's amazing, and thank you, Elena, for writing about it. Um, then we have um, Len Johnson, Len Johnson, boxer, um, born in Manchester, 1902 to 74, just to put him in, in chronological context, a, a black um, communist, um, and did, did join the party at the end of the war. Sorry if I keep looking down at my notes because of course this has been the great joy of this project. It's brought to our attention um, as, as, as editors and as a party so many people but we're not necessarily experts on them all and I don't want to make it up as I go along either. Um, he did fantastic again anti-racist work, anti-fascist work, um, he attended the Pan-African Congress in Manchester um, immediately after the war. Um, he wrote for the um, Daily Worker. He wrote sports, um, sports uh, articles for the Daily Worker. Um, and uh, when he died, um, he experienced tremendous racism, which was why he couldn't uh, go ahead and fight um, in, in some of the major boxing championships um, and have titles. The Manchester Evening News article said, champ with no title. So that was Len Johnson. And then we have um, Bill, Bill Jones and uh, Tad is with us this afternoon and, uh, and, and, and has written a, a, a really great piece uh, about her dad, Bill. Um, born and bred in, in Liverpool um, and, uh, and uh, um, Spent most of his life in Kirby, I, 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 I believe, um, and he was a UCAT, he was shop steward and convener at major building sites across the North West, headed the Merseyside Strike Committee um, during the 1972 building strike. Um, he got blacklisted, he appeared on the Economic League's horrible list um, three times. He was a member of the Communist Party from an early age, um, right through his life. Um, and he was also very active in opening up the Red Star Social Club. Fantastic. It was an amazing life. An amazing, amazing life. Um, we have um, Dorothy um, Puya. Um, I hope I've pronounced her name right, 1932 to... Uh, 2013, again one of the most important black members that the party has had, um, joined the YCL, she was from Liverpool, joined, joined the YCL, she presented Paul Robeson with um, flowers 
when he uh, did his tour in 1949. Um, she was a nurse and then a teacher. She moved to London. Um, she set up uh, Teachers Against Racism. She was involved in the Dragon's Teeth Project Against Racism in Children's Books. She was um, a, a, a leading member um, of the National Assembly of Women. Um, she, uh, in London, she became head, head of uh, race equality for Haringey Council. She moved back to uh, Liverpool. And amongst the many things I could say about her, she urged the setting up of slavery museum. Who else have we got? I'm running out of time and you're going to want to ask me about uh, one or two people. So I think I'm just going to tell you who else I was going to talk about. Terry Marsland, of course, um, the, uh, uh, who eventually a wonderful union work. Um, and, and she was the president, became president of the National Assembly of Women in 1992. Um, she, in her union work, she came to be gen, general, sorry, deputy general secretary of the Tobacco Workers Union. Um, she was a great peace activist as well. Ewan McCall, I don't need to say too much about who I born in, um, born in Salford. Um, and, uh, and uh, uh, YC, YC Eller, and as well as all his music, his contribution to folk and music, the music of the uh, working class movement. He was, of course, also associated through the YCL with the organization of the mass festivals uh, of Kinder Scout. On Kinder Scout. Um, in terms of his music, I did just want to tell you what his son has um, said about uh, his, he said that his father's songs were all love songs. They were either um, to a person or love songs to a particular trade or love songs to the working class. We have Leo McCree, um, who, um, nine, uh, 1900 to 1967. Um, who did, amongst other things, huge work against sectarianism um, in, in, in Liverpool. Um, and uh, is very, very famous for saying, um, you fools, you fight each other every 17th of March and 12th of July, but forget a, that you forget about your empty bellies for the rest of the year. He was an active CP member all his life, um, he stood for election, he got really respectable um, votes, um, wonderful. Benny Rothman I've got, and I know you know all about uh, Benny, YCL Communist um, um, Party, party as well, and, um, and uh, the, the great uh, Kinder Trespass, but so, so much more. And the last person I got on my list for this afternoon um, for my input um, is Sam Watts. And Sam Watts, um, he appeared um, in Ken Loach's film, The Spirit of 45. Um, and um, he was the old, older person who said, um, they don't realize the strength they've got, do they? They don't realize the power they've got. The working class can change the whole history as quick as that, they just don't realise they haven't grasped it. And so it's not only because he's from the Northwest and his name ends with a W, that I put him last um, on the list. It's because actually um, what he said encapsulates what I think we're all about. Every single person who is here today, the organisations we belong to um, and all our work going forward. But Sam was uh, one of eight children. He grew up in what he, he describes as absolutely filthy um, bed bug, vermin, flea ridden um, um, circumstances. Eight children, as I say, um, three of them um, died, um, two of them on one occasion. And he remembers taking the little coffins to a um, pauper's funeral. Um, his um, uncle was executed um, for cowardice in the 
this world war and you remember there was a campaign that wasn't resolved until 2006 um, to get those men um, pardoned um, and, and uh, he did of course live to see um, his uncle pardoned. Um, he went to um, London after the Second World War, he came back to Liverpool to the docks, he read the ragged trousered philanthropist, um, as so many of us did, it was so, 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 so influential um, on, on us, and he heard Harry Pollock, our General Secretary, speak, and he joined the Communist Party then as a young man, because um, he was born in 1925, and he was in the Communist Party. 60 years. So they just don't realise they haven't grasped it, said Sam. Um, the working class can change the whole history as quick as that. So everyone, thank you for um, for enabling me to, um, to, to make that introduction and to introduce some of the characters from it as well as some of the characters who've written for it. If we could have the last slide, Lynette. There we are. Um, it's, it's the commercial, the commercial for the book. Um, uh, we, we are launching it, of course, on the 1st of August, but we've had some difficulty, of course, because of the COVID lockdown and everything. It will be ready to be shipped, as you see, from the 14th of August. I do hope that you all get it, that you give it as presents to people, that you share this great celebration of lives and contribution, because that's what we're all about. It's about theory and struggle. And we sometimes forget the individuals who are part of that struggle. We're all part of it, and everybody makes an amazing contribution, um, as this book reflects. Um, so the Communist Party rejoices in all of these people, in all of the comrades that it will include in the next volume, and in all of the unsung heroes that we may perhaps never ever get to um, put into this volume. But the work of biography has been given a new importance by our celebration, and I hope that it really does continue because it inspires us um, as well as, it's not just information about people, it's not just interesting information. It is an inspiration for our work against racism, against fascism, against exploitation, against um, imperialism, and for peace and socialism in Britain and the world. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Liz, and uh, virtual applause is, is coming in for you, as you can see. So that's <laughs> not quite the same as having people smiling at you the, uh, directly, but hopefully uh, that, that encourages you to know that, that people have enjoyed what, uh, what you've told us and, uh, and a part of the, the celebrating of, uh, of the launch of this book, which is fantastic. So um, if people would like to uh, put a message in the chat or a question in the chat, then please do so. Or if anybody of you wants to wave at me uh, and make a contribution, any, particularly any of you who have contributed to the book, um, it would be fantastic to hear about the, the processes that you went through or anything like that. I'm just having a quick look to see if anybody's waving at me. Everyone's not there. Everyone's now frozen like statues. Ooh. So they're not waving. <laughs> well, it would be great oh, to hear on, from the contributor. Right. It's been such a shame to have. I know you're there. Please. Yes. Let's see say if I can, uh, what I'm going to try and do is do a different way of. Oh, cat uh, waving. Cat waving. You can. Um, yes. Do unmute yourself, cat. Yeah. There you go. I'm done. <laughs> Well, I'm only um, speaking because Liz just said she'd like to hear from one of the contributors. Thank you very much for that introduction, Liz. It was brilliant as ever. Although I participated in contributing some words to a couple of those who are listed in it, I haven't obviously seen no. uh, the full thing. So it was great to see the cover, to see the, the number of people who have contributed uh, and to hear the list that you obviously you focused on Northwest people because of where you are. Uh, which was great. In terms of the process, um, 
I think most people were in, in the party were asked throughout the country who did they want to contribute and how what would they like to say. Um, I couldn't resist the possibility of remembering my father in the contribution because he played such a big part in my life as well. So whether it was in trade unionism or um, a peace or in the Communist Party, he kind of led not just me, but the whole family into a way of working. And I thought that that needed to be remembered. And the same with Leo McGree. It was Leo McGree who got my dad into the party. Uh, and so I think it's very important and it's great that the party has taken this initiative and remembered those people in such a good way. And I don't think it competes with Graeme Stevenson's um, biographies, which is a wonderful, wonderful mm. resource. Um, in fact, it just complements it. And especially because he's in it, will point people to his way so that they can read about even more people and remember the record of the Communist Party. I hope people here today um, will take the time. The party has been running wonderful pandemonium lectures this week, very informative, very good. Um, and they'll be on each night until Saturday. And then Saturday, we've got, I think, 13 sessions. Liz, I'm doing your job now, again. <laughs> no, that's great. <laughs> You we tell do, them, Kat. <laughs> we have 13 sessions and about 67 speakers, um, over half of which are women. Um, we've got uh, topics covering everything, so I'm sure you'll be able to find something of interest there if you click on to the Communist Party. So um, I'll just say thank you for inviting me to write a contribution into the book. Thank you for telling us about the rest of the book. And I look forward to ce celebrating the 100th anniversary of the party at the event on Saturday. Great. Brilliant. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, right. Have we got Eleanor's waving. And Eleanor's waving. Let's get back to Eleanor. Right. Okay. And then um, afterwards. I'm going to see if you can unmute yourself now, Eleanor. Should be able to. I hope so, yes. Right. Now, I, I was just going to say, I've said it to you before, but uh, uh, Ruth and Eddie um, were the cause of me getting highly involved in the library because I uh, went along to them because when, when my mother had died, I wanted to uh, sort out uh, papers and all the rest of it. And, and I was, went, came along to them to ask for advice how I should do it. And she said, well, come and give a talk about her, <laughs> which, which is what I did on International Women's Day. But, so, but it was, that was the way she got you involved, <laughs> was actually getting it to do, your, do things yourself that you didn't think you could do. But I thought it was really brilliant. So I think, uh, yeah, and, and I think when we look back on, I mean, Liz Payne talked about uh, Doris Hatt, an incredible woman. I can remember going to her house once, but uh, there, there just are incredible people that I, I met by having a mother who was in the party and we met all sorts of other people as well. But of course, my mother wasn't the first of my family to join the party because my father had joined the party before as a Oxford Marxist. You know, he'd been to Oxford on a scholarship. And so when they met, he was already a member of the party, although he had to keep it pretty quiet because he was needed over in, uh, at the beginning of the war, he was needed in America to sort out, he was worked for a zinc company making zinc, which is an important part of brass. And so he went over to the uh, States, but he didn't say he was, or he didn't say he wasn't a member of the party. Uh, although another one who did was um, J.D. Bernal was also sent over there. Um, and, and they, uh, and they uh, uh, let him in because it was so important. But then he wanted his assistant to go, who wasn't a member of the party. And they tried to refuse him entry on the basis he worked for Bernal, who was in the Communist Party. So the whole issue of prescriptions and all the rest of it is something that was very live all the way, a long way through the party. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alison has w uh, waved a hand at me. So, uh, Alison, I think you can unmute yourself now. Yeah, you're on. Yeah. Hello. Um, yes, I, I'm busy this week. I'm tweeting and Facebooking about all the Communist Party events and stuff that's going on. So it's all very exciting for me this week and hectic as well. Um, I'm so excited about this book because 
Um, I'm a member of the Manchester branch and we've got a little blog and I'm always looking for content and, you know, things to write about. And we, we recently did um, some, a, a bit of a campaign around Len Johnson, who's in the book. So this book is going to be a great source for me to go at a starting point for, for other, other series that we can do on our uh, social media. So, uh, so thank you. It looks great. And it's interesting that it's only women that are speaking so far, isn't it? <laughs> Evan's been waving, I think. I saw Evan waving. He's one of oh, the uh, wait, right, contributors as well, Evan Pritchard. Let, let me find who's, who's, let's find somebody waving. Evan, Evan, do you wish to speak? Okay, there you go. You should be able to unmute yourself. Hi, yeah, thanks. Uh, I mean, thanks, Liz. That was, as, uh, as, as Cad said, excellent as always. And uh, thanks for that, Liz. And also thanks very much to the Working Class Movement Library um, for, for hosting this event. Um, uh, I'm, I'm actually, I'm a member, I'm also a, a member of the Communist Party. Uh, I'm the uh, North, in fact, I'm North West District Secretary presently. Um, I did um, consider actually, uh, or I tried to uh, find out some information about my mother in order to try and uh, uh, make uh, consider whether I could put something about her. My mum was uh, my mum was joined the uh, YCL and then the Communist Party in Manchester. She'd been in the Labour League of Youth in uh, as it was then in, in Huddersfield before she went to Manchester University, just before the Second World War. Um, unfortunately, the only, uh, she suffered from uh, Alzheimer's for, for a long time and, and, and was thoroughly, you know, th th you know thoroughly affected by, by the time I, I joined the party myself. And the only person that who I would have been able to get any information about, about her time in the CP that I knew was my auntie Dorothy, who, who had been in the party at the same time as my mum. But unfortunately, unlike my mum, who, who, who stayed loyal to the Labour movement, my auntie, my auntie became a rabid Tory and anti-communist. So it was actually, uh, you know, so she didn't, just didn't want to talk about it, uh, sadly enough. Um, and uh, she sadly passed away as well. Um, what I, what, what I would be, what, what, what I'm really uh, pleased about this this event taking place at the Working Class Movement Library, and also the the, the fact that the, that the library is kindly uh, uh, will be kindly allowing us to uh, put our exhibition when we're able to do so, because obviously we've got. The, the, we've got all the problems everybody else is suffering from at the moment with with COVID. Uh, is that it's it's remarkable to me, and I'm not saying this in any way in a negative sense. I think it's absolutely positive. The number of uh, events and lectures that have been hosted by the library over the years, understandably because of the contribution of, you know, the uh, you know of, 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 of Ruth and Eddie and, and and all the archives, is how many of the lectures and whatever have been. Hit, hit the history of involved the history of the communist party and i think what's really important to this uh, now this is part of the sense our centenary event is that you know we are we you know we are an existing party we, we still carry we, we, we do carry on uh, flying the flag keeping the flame burning and it's important as well when you take that into account that the Communist Party, as is, as is, as is so, will be so vividly shown by these biographies, is a, is a party that's been full of people that have contributed to the movement, to the progressive movement as a whole. The Communist Party is not there as a sort of sectarian rival or enemy of everybody else in the movement or doing our own thing. We're not a sect. That is not what, uh, and, and, you know, and, and this goes right back to the Communist Manifesto in terms of what Marx and Engels wrote about what distinguishes communists from, from other parts of the working class movement. Uh, and, and, and I think it, that is the, the great thing, it is the contribution along with others, you know, who we, who we value, that we, that we have historically made and will seek to continue to make to, to, uh, to the movement as a whole. So again, thanks very much to the, you know, but, but, but this, this is an opportunity, as I say, for us to actually show that we do still 
exist. This isn't just about commemorating the past, it's about how we go through to the future and how we, along with our allies, can make a, a, a massive contribution in this country to changing, uh, to changing society. Uh, and finally, I'm glad that, um, I'm glad that uh, Alison mentioned the Len Johnson uh, memorial thing. That was actually established, there's a petition going around to establish a, 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 a monument or a statue uh, to Len Johnson in Clayton. And in fact, you know, the people that have set that, the ball rolling on that weren't actually party members. We obviously are going to play a, you know, the biggest role we can in this campaign. But it was, you know, it was a, it was a, my understanding. It was actually a member of the Labour Party who, 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 uh, who, who, who set this up. And interestingly enough, as many comrades will know, the uh, the, st the the plaque to Harry Pollitt uh, in 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 Droylston was actually put up by uh, by Labour Party people. You know, so so, you know, whatever you know, whatever differences we have, you know, we are part. You know, we do consider ourselves to be part of this movement, you know, this great working class movement. Thanks. Thanks, Evan. I, uh, uh, just to uh, say that it says on our uh, window, explore the past, change the future. So that certainly is something that we are, we are aiming to make, the, make those links. And we're actually just starting a project with some art see response funding, which is about creating podcasts and using the library resources in a different way, different to us. And uh, Len Johnson is one of the uh, people who we'll be focusing on as in the course of that. It's a project called Begin the World Over Again that you can find details of on our website. And it's literally just, just underway and we're just delighted to be able to pass on some money to artists to help us um, in, in thinking about this. And uh, yeah, it's certainly the times for thinking about beginning the world over again, isn't it? Okay, was there anybody else who was waving at you, Liz, that you wanted to? I don't see anybody waving, but... Uh... Okay, all right. Um, well, we've, we've had some good contributions. I, I think people are preferring to do it that way than the chat, although there's, uh, uh, there's an opportunity, final opportunity, I guess, to contribute. Thank you. Jane has put the link to our new project in the chat for you. Um, Okay, I think we are drawing to a close, Liz. So this this is um, our last talk for a little bit. We're going to have a, of a, of a bit of a, a pause. We're going to be coming back in late September. So do please keep an eye on our social media or on the events page on our website. Um, you can sign up for our e-bulletin via the website and then you'll find out everything. That's so, uh, we don't want to lose you during the course of this, but we're going to be focusing on this new project. Uh, over the next few weeks and also working out how to get the library back open again, uh, which I'm sure you will be pleased to hear is, is certainly uh, the top of our list of priorities. Although I think that the talks, when they come back in September, if I'm sure these talks will still be going ahead on Zoom. Apart from anything else, it means that those of you who are further away can, uh, can, can join in, which is uh, brilliant. And it's been great to have Liz here from Taunton. Yes, Liz. Could I just say before we all go, a, yeah. such a big thank you again to you all for coming and for, uh, and for the interest that you've shown. And I wanted to do a little bit of an appeal because I think that there will be many, many people while we've been talking who think, I wonder if so-and-so was in or there. I, you know, I, there, there, there are people that you know um, we might be able to include in our, in our later publishing. If that's the case, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to testing them. But it just might be possible that you could let Lynette know if there are any names and she'll pass, uh, pass them on. The other thing that I wanted to say is um, on that theme of unity, the red lives are not only party history, they are all our histories. We are a movement and, this, and, and these people were part of many, many aspects of that movement. It lives, it flows, we live it every day. Um, that's what we're all about. Um, so red lives are not just party lives, they're all our lives. Um, and I'd like to wish you all well in all the struggles that you're involved with in every aspect of your life, whatever you're doing.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Liz. You've got an appreciative audience who are putting messages of appreciation in the chat, which I can send on to you when that gets sent to me. So, yeah, yeah, that's um, that's terrific. And if you missed the start of the recording uh, or if you want to pass this on to anybody else, this is going to be going up on our, our YouTube channel, hopefully later today. So that's youtube.com forward slash WCM library and you'll be able to, to see the full thing there. So I, I usually am with just a quick plug uh, ourselves in the, uh, the talks are of course free, but if you felt able to donate to us, there is a donate button on our website, uh, which we'd be delighted if you pressed needless to say. Um, uh, however, it's not compulsory by, by any means. We, we just want to say thank you to everybody, particularly Liz obviously, but to everybody else for having joined us. The 16th of our uh, online talks and some of you I think might have been here for uh, um, most if not all of them so thank you very much for that and uh, we look forward to seeing you back again in the autumn as I say and in the meantime take care all the best in solidarity goodbye from the working class movement library <laughs>